August of 90. And the schoolhouse gets a request for an instructor to come over there to, to, to do training with uh, Saudis and Kuwaitis on um, close air support operations, uh, radio operations, so forth and so on. So I got selected to go. Uh, Doug Akers was the commandant at the time. He wanted me to go. I said, okay, I'll go. So I left like November uh, by the time I got over there. Um, I was stationed at, at King Khalid Military Base. Charlie O'Reardon was over there with me. Uh, another guy, another airman there, Davis. I want to say it was John Davis. I, I, I just can't remember his first name. But the three of us were over there essentially doing the same thing. So up until mid-January when Desert uh, Storm kicked off, I was in the classroom teaching. Or, you know, in the classroom and then not up in Kuwait, but out in, out in the field. Sure. One of the coolest things, I tell this story a lot. When we first got over there and we were out there and we got in our vehicles. I mean, I used to do a lot of navigation in Panama as far as point to point navigation, so forth and so on. You look at these maps, you can figure out all kinds of stuff on the terrain. <laughs> right. You go over there to, to Saudi Arabia and you open up a map. Man, there's like nothing. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, there's like one major highway here, one major highway here. And then you're like, they want you to go to this point in between. So uh, I remember when we got our, our second vehicle, it wasn't long after I was there, that I get inside and inside there's this box mounted on there on the front and, it, and it's, it's good size. It's probably like, like I said about this wide. And uh, the guy says, boys, he goes, this fancy machine here is called the global positioning system and it's going to help you to find your way out here in the desert. And he wasn't lying. Yeah. That thing was a lifesaver. Oh. You know, you put your coordinates in, you know, where you're at, where you want to go. And um, yeah, so when we were out there training and all that, navigating around that GPS, obviously you have the same thing on your phone these days. <laughs> right, that, right. At that time, you know, it was a whole different thing. But, um, you know, when I was there too, there was a lot of guys that obviously had already deployed over there. 82nd was there. There were a lot of, lot of guys that were over there. And there were a lot of guys, Jimmy Seabrooks was over there. There were a lot of guys that were actually aligned with their units. So, you know, we had guys with the Egyptians, with the French, with the Syrians. Really? Um, I was with the Kuwaitis and the Saudis. Eventually, when we deployed, I was with the Saudis. Huh. Um, and they were training with their, their guys as well, too. Huh. Um, but like I said, I was the only one at that time from the schoolhouse. Later on, um, they did send in some more guys from the schoolhouse. Bill Martin, Ted Corbett, I know, uh, was over there. Um, but, but that was actually after the, uh, the air war story. Okay. Yeah. Once I'm there, then I think it was January 17th or whatever things kick off. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, we deploy as far as going up North, huh. you know, one of the things I say about over there too, is, is even more so than Panama, I mean, gamma goblin shots and all the other good stuff that we used to get, yeah. man, they stuck us with so much stuff over there. I have no idea what was some of it. I just, I always say people talk about, oh, you should be concerned about this. You can be, I said, man, my immune system has been racked over so many times, right. you know, over the years. I said, I don't think there's a whole lot you can put in me that my body's not going to fight off. Yeah. It hasn't already fought off, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so we, um, we deployed, uh, went up there with our vehicles. Um, there were two officers that were with me from Herbert, uh, a guy named Al Gore, uh, Major Al Gore and a, and a guy named uh, Miles Bat, both of them were majors. And, and Gore was just a beloved figure in in the career field. I mean, anybody that knew him down there at Herbert and all, he's just a just a great guy. But it was a lot of sitting and waiting, mm. sitting and waiting, sitting and waiting. Yeah, we had some obviously the scud alerts, and there were some scuds that did land in few places. People were concerned about chemical weapons. Put our mop gear on, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then eventually made our way up into Kuwait. Um, and by that time, air power and the, the advanced ground forces had really taken care of things. Right. Um, I was up there. I could, I could see the, the fires burning from the oil fields, weren't far from there. Um, went into some bunkers. Which I actually found a great, I found a, a Kuwaiti flag. It was a Kuwaiti battle flag. And uh, I can't remember actually what it said. I had it for years, and then um, I sent it up to Bragg when Randy Long was up there. They were putting some type of museum or something together. And uh, and sent it up to that to, to him, and then um, hung out, did our thing. Everything was over with, rolled back, and then eventually uh, came back home. 